A few months ago, one of my most used features in ChatGPT just vanished. That was its ability to access current web results by searching the web with Bing. I found this feature gave more comprehensive results on many topics than just using Bing Chat, even though conceptually both use the same index of the web and the same underlying GPT-4 model for generation responses. This capability was pulled because it appeared that it was found that it could circumvent protections on paywalled content, and not wanting to be sued for anything else right now, OpenAI decided to shelve the feature. But now it's back, although a little different. As always, any information or accounts you see in the demos on this video use simulation data or data that is otherwise publicly accessible. Let's see how we can get started with this feature in ChatGPT+. So to turn on this feature, you're just going to head down to the three dots next to the account information in the bottom left hand side of your ChatGPT window. And if you open this up and go to settings and beta, if you go to beta features, you just need to make sure the browse with Bing feature is turned on. Once that's turned on, um, if you select GPT-4, then you'll be able to use this browse with Bing beta feature there. So a couple of months back, before ChatGPT's previous Bing-powered web access was turned off, I made a video comparing it with Bard and Bing Chat. So given that I have those screen recordings of how ChatGPT with Bing web access answered prompts back then, I thought it would be interesting to compare and contrast how it does the same prompt now. Bear in mind that the original test did not specifically seek to leverage the web browsing feature, but we'll move on to this later in this video. Thanks for watching. Please remember to hit the like button so that we can share this content with as many interested people as possible. And if you want to see more like this, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you'll know immediately as soon as I release another video. Also, if there are people in your wider network who would be interested in content like this, please share it there too. Thanks. So to start off, let us ask it to help us get started with Power Platform by breaking it down into smaller parts and using analogies and real life examples to make it more relatable. The old service really struggled on this. Initially, it came up with some interesting and creative narrative around the subject, comparing all the components to people in a band. And it seemed to be doing a really good job until it got stuck halfway through with a web search, and then it ended up restarting. By comparison, the new web tool creates a much more basic format of response, but it still has some creativity baked in. But perhaps it goes a little bit too deep in following the letter of creating analogies for every item. Ultimately, neither starts off by doing a web search, and instead both seem to intend to rely on their internal trained knowledge. Which, from my point of view, for fast-moving issues like how a SaaS system works, seems flawed. Ultimately, the new is far quicker and didn't get hung up like the older version did, which in the end took three and a half minutes to complete its response, and I had to speed it up by five times to show you here. Next, I asked it to create a study guide for taking the PL100 app maker exam. Neither bothers to start by doing a web search, which again, for something that is going to frequently change like the syllabus of an exam, is perhaps a weakness. So again, we're not really testing the web browsing capability here, just showing that it's lacking in using its web browsing features. Despite this, ChatGPT of May did a much better job than ChatGPT of September, taking time to understand my schedule and what I was looking for before coming up with a tailored response. By comparison, the new ChatGPT just spat out a response that didn't seem tailored to either the exam itself nor my needs. Again, this doesn't show off the capabilities of web browsing well, as for something like this that's open to change, you would expect a web search to be done to get the latest information. Overall, this was disappointing both times, but much more disappointing now than it was several months ago. In this last comparative example, I do one of my favourite AI tests, can it get information from YouTube? And both, this time, start off by searching the web and finding content on YouTube. Remember in my recent video of Bard's new extensions capability? Its YouTube extension completely screwed this up. So what can we expect from ChatGPT? 
The new web browsing feature provides a reasonable answer, although these are recent videos rather than ones that are particularly popular on the channel. I think this probably tells us something about how ChatGPT is gathering information from the web, and it isn't plowing too deep into the detail of something like a YouTube page to get 100% of what you're looking for, either because it doesn't understand the context, or more likely it just doesn't want to be needing to do multiple unnecessary clicks. It does better than the old version of this tool, which had to rely on my website content to provide a decent answer, but was terribly slow in doing it. But to underline the point, both of these do much better than Bard's current capability, even when turning the YouTube extension on. So we can see from these demos that the new web access capability in ChatGPT actually seems to have the same reluctance to access the web that its old incarnation had, and maybe even worse on some requests. Certainly you shouldn't think that turning on this feature gets you the latest information from the web all the time for every prompt. It is quicker by a long way it seems though, so that's certainly a bonus. But let's look at some basic requests that necessarily need the web as responded to by ChatGPT with web browsing enabled and Bing Chat Enterprise. Again, both of these tools use the same Bing search index and the same GPT-4 model, so we'd assume their performance should be pretty close. So I've got the ChatGPT Browse with Bing feature open on the left and Bing Chat Enterprise in the balanced mode open on the right. It's important just to know I don't have any custom instructions turned on on ChatGPT, so this is just running as it normally would if you didn't have anything in there. So first of all, I'm going to ask these two about current affairs. So both of them provide different aspects of the news that's going on today, but you can see that ChatGPT only provides one link, it's just relying on Reuters World News, whereas Bing is relying on several different links, it's got a few from MSN News, BBC, CNN, um, and one more here, Sky News as well. So you can see that there's a wider range of sources that Bing appears to be using by default. Next, I'm gonna ask them both for some tech how-to information. The request is, how do I activate Duet AI for Google Workspace? And you can see again that ChatGPT only cites one resource, whereas Bing Chat cites a number of different resources here, um, eight or more in fact. You can see it's actually uh, cited. I'm not quite sure why it needed to go to Synology to work out how to turn on Google Workspace. So um, you can see that there's a more expansive answer over here. I, this isn't actually something um, I have a great deal of expertise in, so it looks like it, it sounds like the right way that you would go about doing some of this stuff. But you can see there's certainly more instructions here in Bing Chat than there were in ChatGPT. Next, I've headed over to Wikipedia and I just want to grab the page that's the first in this in the news section. And it's actually the um, Australian Rules Football Grand Final that there's a page about. So what I'm going to ask both of these to do is to actually take a look at this web page and tell me about it. And I'm simply going to make the request, tell me about, and then the web page. And you can see that in this case, again, we have a more expansive answer from Bing than we do from uh, ChatGPT. But what I asked it to do was to tell me about a particular web page. And instead of just telling me about that particular web page, Bing went off and uh, provided some more information from other web pages as well. Lastly, I pulled up this uh, newsletter from the New York Times on the future of AI. And I'm going to ask both of our services to come up with other articles that provide a counterpoint to what they're seeing on this page. And you can see that both of them managed to um, do what we'd asked, but approached it in a slightly different way. And again, Bing's response is more expansive than that of ChatGPT. Interestingly, you can interrogate ChatGPT itself on its new web browsing feature versus the old one. So you can ask ChatGPT to tell you about its new web browsing feature. You can see it introduces the concept of the tool named Browser. 
and tells you about the different things that it can do and the fact that it'll notify you when it's using that tool. We can also ask ChatGPT to provide us with a comparison of this new tool versus the one that it had previously. And this is interesting, I've not seen this before, but obviously I'm being asked which response is better um, in order to help ChatGPT's uh, responses. But you can see in both cases, it gives me an idea about what the new browser tool can do and what browse with Bing could do. Um, it's interesting that it says here the search engine is customizable. Um, I'm assuming that means it's customizable on ChatGPT's side, which is interesting because they've called this Browse with Bing, but maybe they're not committed to browsing with Bing. Maybe they're open to perhaps in the future browsing with Google instead. Um, who knows? Uh, but you can see there are some differences in what the new feature can do versus the old feature. Overall, based on this comparison to how web searching worked back under the old ChatGPT capability and how it currently works in Bing Chat, I think ChatGPT's new implementation has some room for improvement. It seems that ChatGPT is too quick to rely on what it thinks it knows and too slow to reach out to the web to get confirmations, even in tasks where it makes logical sense to do so, like checking the latest requirements on exam syllabus. I think this is potentially confusing as you could turn on web browsing and assume that this implies it wants to browse the web, but it actually doesn't. And often, even if it does browse the web, it only goes out and finds one source. This is a welcome addition back into ChatGPT, but I'm not really sure it highlights any capability we don't get from Bing Chat, which has improved a lot since I was using this back in May. And remember, we now have Bing Chat Enterprise as well. I really wanted to assume I really want to use the web when I turn on that feature. I wonder if this is something we can push it to do using custom instructions. This may be something I look into for a future video. Are you pleased this is back? Have you tried it yet? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching through to the end. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, bye bye.